the name of this presentation is Winter Creeper is Coming. And uh, this is a close up of the Winter Creeper plant. And it's shiny green. And one of the ways to tell it, it's got a fairly prominent white midrib going down the center of it. And then little tiny, when uh, it's growing, little red um, bits around its new growth. You can see the combination of red and green. So very Christmassy, which is one reason it's so popular. What is Winter Creeper? Its botanical name is Euonymus fortunae, and I may not be pronouncing that the way they expect us to, but that's one way to say it. Um, the Euonymus family has about 150 species, so there's quite a lot of them in this. Many of them are native to China or Japan. They're Asian. Some of them, however, come from Europe. There are some native ones here in North America, Madagascar or Australasia. So it is worldwide, this particular family which kind of gives you a hint that it is fairly vigorous and adaptable. Here are some of the plants in the Euonymus family. Um, it can be a vine, a shrub, or a tree. It generally has small flowers. That's usually a smaller part of it. The fruit of a Euonymus are red, pink, and often kind of fleshy little berry things. The leaves have sort of a waxy coating and that helps prevent it, um, protect it during freezes or droughts. And it often almost always has bright autumn colors on the leaves. They turn bright red or sort of a pink or orange. And that's one of the reasons people like it is it's such a pretty thing when almost all the stuff around it is fading. They're sometimes referred to as spindle trees. That's an old name because the wood is dense and makes good spindles for spinning um, thread, you drop spindles and other various uh, crafts. The uh, second part of its name comes from this fellow, Mr. Robert Fortune, and he traveled around and he was a botanist and went all over the world and found plants. And so all of these plants got his name attached. So as you can see, he was uh, quite the adventurer. And, uh, and he brought you know the plants back, which is what people did. They would kind of go and collect plants and bring them back so that everybody could see them which sort of like plant zoos. Unfortunately, a lot of the plants escape from the zoos or people take them out of the zoos. And that's one of the problems we have with winter creeper. Uh, here's a little bit on our North American Euonymus. The Western Wahoo, hearts are bursting, or hearts are busting sometimes. And you can see there's the picture of the fruit and it, it pops open, that's why it's hearts are busting. Eastern Wahoo, and we have that around here. And running strawberry is another um, variety of North American Euonymus. And I have not actually seen that. I don't know what that one looks like in the wild or you know, growing, but it might make a nice uh, ground cover, they say. So winter creeper, the planting question tonight. Uh, the particular one we're looking at tonight is a vine. It has small white flowers, not very impressive. And it has these little pink uh, fruits. And here they're white and they turn redder as they get um, more mature. Again, the waxy coating on the leaves and the bright autumn colors. Here it's sort of a burgundy. It's not that brilliant um, red you might see on burning bush, but it's certainly a, a, a nice color. And it can have a variety of leaf colors. People have bred this. You'll find variegated ones with white edges, stripes, that kind of thing. And people think that's pretty. Gives you a little variety. Its growth habits. It grows in sun. It grows in shade. It grows on the ground. It grows up trees. It grows in basic soil, acidic soil. It grows by the roots. It grows by seeds. It grows in all of these zones. I feel like I'm Dr. Seuss going on all the way as these different plant will grow. But you can see all of those combine to make the plant invasive. It'll grow pretty much anywhere. And it grows fast. And it grows early in the springtime. And it has no native anybody who eats it, pretty much. So yes, very, very invasive. There we go. And how does it get here? How does this, this plant get to our yards? Well, I went to Lowe's and went to Google and I typed in winter creeper and it gave me 11 different options to buy winter creeper at Lowe's. 
Lowe's is selling this still. Here's a picture of someone started it as a ground cover in the corner and it's a vine and it'll grow on the ground, but it likes to grow up. That's its main, uh, what it wants to do. And here you can see it starting to climb up the side of the house. And here's a picture of it on a tree and it has climbed up the tree and into the branches and all around it. So why does the vine grow up? It wants to get up so it gets more sun. When it gets more sun, it starts making its fruit. It usually does not fruit when it's on the ground. On the ground, it spreads mostly by runners. But if it can make fruit, then along come a bird to eat the fruit. Now, this bird is not eating the berry of a winter creeper. It's eating the berry of that tree, which I'm not sure what it is. I think that's a cedar waxwing. And um, I just picked a generic bird picture, sorry. Well, the bird eats the berries and distributes the berries various places. And then you get winter creeper in the woods. And eventually all you have is winter creeper in the woods. There's nothing else in the woods except the winter creeper on the ground and growing up the trees. Um, here's, I think that's kudzu, but here's an example of what an out of control vine can do. Ah, yes. Winter creeper is sometimes known as kudzu of the north. Kudzu doesn't handle freezes very well, so it's primarily considered a southern invasive species. Winter creeper doesn't care that much if it gets cold, it just keeps growing and manages to hang on through the winter. And it, it also grows in the south. And we're sort of on the edge of north-south divide here in Kentucky. So we get winter creeper growing pretty much all year. It may slow down in January and February, but it's growing in March and sending out uh, tendrils. So here's a, for some reason, um, here's estimated acres covered by winter creeper in forests. Um, and this, I want you to take a note of the year. That's 2008, that's 12 years ago. And even 12 years ago, it said we had over 6,000 acres of forest, that's just forest, covered by winter creeper. Covered, I mean, smothered is perhaps a better word. And that again, 2008. So it's grown since then, it's continuing to grow and it's a kind of a scary thing. So it's not just winter creeper is coming. I know I use that as the title because of the Game of Thrones uh, tie-in, but winter creeper is here. It is all around us. Um, what can we do about it? An ounce of prevention, they say, is worth, of course, the pound of cure. So one, don't buy this plant. It's a lovely plant in its home. Uh, we don't need it in the, where we are here. Don't plant it. If someone gives it to you, throw it out. Don't give it away to friends. If you have some growing in your yard or in your uh, landscaping, you decide you have enough of it and you want to share it, please don't. Please do not share this plant. And above all, do not let it climb, start making berries because then it'll spread even faster out of your yard. So what can we do about it? That ounce of prevention. We can use other ground covers and spaces where we would like some ground covers. Here's some ideas. Uh, Virginia creeper. It's also a fairly aggressive vine, but it's native. And there are creatures here who eat it. And it makes a lovely green in the summer and red in the fall, just like the winter creeper does. Running strawberry, that's our Native American euonymus vine. That makes another good ground cover. Wild ginger for shady spots. And that's a lovely plant. And green and gold has beautiful little yellow flowers. And that makes it, that spreads fairly quickly and makes a good ground cover also. Violets. Violets are very aggressive. So be careful where you plant them, but they make an excellent ground cover and they are the host plant, plant for the fritillary butterflies. And they come in a variety. Their flowers can be white or pink or purple. Verbena is, um, purple verbena is great for sunny spots and it makes a nice good ground cover. So we have all these options for ground cover. So if someone says, hey, you need some ground cover in there, please search out one of those options instead of using winter creeper. So let's say we have winter creeper. Say maybe we planted it a while ago or we bought a house where someone else had planted it. 
What can we do about it? And we've decided we don't want it anymore. What do we do about it? Stop the berries. Like I said, don't let it grow tall. If it has grown tall, you can cut the vines. And um, they recommend using the window cut method where you cut the vine twice down low and then again up higher on the tree. So you cut it down close to the ground and then three or four feet above that. And one of the reasons to do that is that um, if you don't cut it, if you just snip the vine, they can reattach just like a bone will knit, the vine things can hook back together and keep growing. Um, so you definitely want a gap between them. And the three or four feet makes it easy for you to see and other people to see, oh, that tree's got, you know, been cut. If you just cut this little much, you may not realize that somebody has gone in and cut there already. So it's a good way to, to see where you've been and where you've been working on this project. So after you cut the vine, and when I say vine, um, of course, when it's young, its vines are very thin and pliable. Um, it can get woody, you know, the vines can get two, three inches around. So we're talking saws, big loppers. Um, you may be able to get by with little clippers for smaller infestations, but as it gets larger, you're going to need some heavier tools. After you cut it, immediately before it has a chance to dry up, paint the bottom cut with herbicide stuff. And we'll go over that in a little bit. And that sucks the herbicide down into the root system. There's no point in painting the top one because it's been cut off from its nutrients. But paint the bottom and do that quick. So here's um, what the book recommends as far as what kind of herbicides to use. And this, uh, this approach is most effective in February and March when the sap is just kind of getting started, you know, it's getting closer to warmer weather. The other cool thing about it is that this time of year, pretty much the only thing that's going to be green in the woods is winter creeper. So it's easy to find and it's pretty easy to know you've got the right plant. Most of our other native plants have gone dormant and are no longer showing green. You might see Japanese honeysuckle, but that's another good one to cut too, so it's okay. So if you've done this, what they recommend is leave the vine as it's climbed up the tree, leave it up there. Don't, don't try pulling it down because um, it's, it's hanging on really tight. And if you try to pull it, you're likely to pull off bark with it and you can strip bark off your tree and hurt your tree. So just wait, um, it'll die and, sh and shrivel up and it'll be a lot easier to pull off or it'll fall off on its own. Uh, it's a lot less work for you. So here we are, more pound of cure. You can kill the root system. We talked about killing the vertical, the vine area. Let's, here's the way to kill roots. Fire will slow this down, but it won't kill it. So burning out the system, burning a patch is one way to stop, to slow it down. Cutting or mowing will actually encourage new growth. So that's not necessarily a great way to try to get rid of this one. Goats and deer will eat the leaves. Um, if they're free to graze for a long time in the area, they will eventually eat the leaves and eat the leaves and eat the leaves and the plant won't get any nutrients from its uh, leaves, won't get chlorophyll energy. And so that will slowly get rid of it. But that assumes, of course, that you've got goats or deer. And most of us don't have goats. And if we do have deer, they're not that um, uh, you know, amenable to being told what to do or what to eat. So that's not a great way to get rid of it. Um, for most of us. So you can, um, you can dig them out. If you've got little small plants, little ones, you can pull them up and dig them out. And that works on the small ones. We recommend that you do not just dig it up and drop the plant because the roots can re-root. Um, I've been taken to carrying a plastic bag with me, you know, in my pocket. And if I find stuff I don't want, I, can, I have a place to put it and take it back to my burn pile. If I'm out in the woods and I don't have my plastic bag, sometimes when I pull up um, winter creeper or Japanese honeysuckle, I'll hang it from a tree branch where it'll dry out, and, and but I won't leave it on the ground where it has a chance to reroot. So that's kind of my emergency trying to slow down this plant. So winter creeper can handle shade, but it doesn't. It does need some sun. So you can smother this plant, cover the plant with cardboard lots of mulch, check frequently to make sure it's not sneaking out the edges or found a hole and it's made its way up because if any of it is getting sunshine, it's gonna send energy back to its roots and the whole plant will keep going. Same thing for Bermuda grass. So you have to make sure you cover it completely and keep it covered. 
And this is a tough plant. They're recommending leaving it covered for two years, which is a long time to leave an area covered with mulch and cardboard. Um, but if you're not covering it with mulch and cardboard, it's gonna be covered with winter creeper. So you're not gonna get much use out of this area anyway. And when you've got a, a very thick infestation. You can poison their leaves. I am not a fan of um, herbicides, but having worked trying to get this plant out of my yard, <laughs> uh, sometimes I've resorted to more drastic measures. The waxy coat is, helps prevent the herbicide from being absorbed. So you'll have to do it uh, several times. Make sure you read and follow all the safety instructions on herbicide. Any, any pesticide or herbicide. Now, one thing I have found, especially as I advance to a certain age, as they say, the text on that stuff is tiny, 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 but a lot of it's online. So you can find the information you need online and read it um, rather than try to read the little pamphlet that comes attached to the, the bottle of herbicide and pesticide that you buy, or you can get a magnifying glass, but I tell you, it's, it's minuscule. So for very large infestations of winter creeper in autumn, and we're actually a little bit past this, but you can still do some of it. You can spray the leaves with 3% glyphosate with a surfactant. The surfactant helps cut through that waxy coating. In winter, and this is where we are now, uh, they recommend using crossbow 2,4-D and triclopyr. I'm not sure how to pronounce those. Um, and so this is some different approaches and you can do the glyphosate in September, October, and then come back at it in November with this stuff. Um, again, read the instructions on the herbicide and make sure you're not using it more often than they recommend. Um, if you find large vines growing across your yard flat horizontal, you can cut the stems and paint them just like you did the vertical vines. And that's best done again in February, March, when it's starting, the sap is starting to run again here in Kentucky. So equipment, if you are gonna use herbicides or pesticides or any poison, uh, make sure it doesn't get on you. So clothes, cover all your skin, wear goggles so you don't get the stuff up in your eyes. Gloves, of course, uh, and gloves that the stuff won't penetrate. So not just like little clothy gloves, but something with a little bit um, more protection. Clippers to cut the vines, loppers to cut the big vines, saw to cut the really big vines. Um, when you carry um, herbicides with you, make sure the container is in a non-spill container so that you don't just accidentally tip it over and have it all over everything. And rather than spraying, if you're, if you're doing the cut vine approach, use a little sponge or a, brush, a paintbrush and brush it exactly where you want it so it doesn't get on the surrounding plants. And you'll need a bag to carry back any um, cut vines that you may have chopped off. So winter creeper is here, as I said, and what we're trying to do is slow it down and remove it some so that our native plants have a chance to grow and thrive because this thing will smother uh, whole ecosystems. And what can we do about it beyond trying to get it out of our yard? Uh, write to stores, write them letters, real letters, and ask them to stop selling it. If enough of us do that, they might get the message. Write online reviews for the plant to explain why you won't be planting it in your own yard. Um, try to take a positive spin on that rather than tell someone you're doing it wrong. Nobody wants to hear that. Um, but just say that you've decided that you are looking at a, uh, a different ground covering because when you have this one, you found it to be a problem and maybe explain why, but try the uh, carrot instead of the stick approach when you're trying to convince other people who may not be aware of the uh, implications of this particular invasive plant. Talk to your neighbors. If they have winter creeper, you are going to have winter creeper. It spreads, it spreads a lot and spreads quickly. Um, Suggest so plant removal as a surface project for a youth group. If you work with scouts or a church group and they're looking for something to do, especially outside nowadays, what with the COVID, and maybe you could work with them, not just suggest it to them, but you could actually go with them and help them identify it. 
um, and at the very least, even if they're not up to pulling it all down, they can go say up and down the neighborhood and say, hey, you've got winter, go knock on the person's door, explain, you've got winter creeper growing on your trees. We'd like to you know, do that uh, window cut, the low cut and the high cut, and at least stop it from going up. And you can explain to people, this vine will kill trees. It's going to smother and break the trees that it's growing on. Please talk to local landscapers and florists. Most of them are totally unaware of this problem. They see it as a pretty green plant that doesn't need a lot of care. And so they are continuing to plant it even now. Again, also talk to your city and your county maintenance crews. Um, you know, go and if you see them out and about, talk to them about this problem. Uh, garden clubs are another group of people that usually have, they usually know a lot of people in the community and that's a good place to convince them to stop using this plant. And if everybody gets the word, maybe we'll stop seeing it quite so, uh, used so much in landscaping. And so this is my kind of rallying cries, free the trees. And this time of year, as the leaves come off, you can really see the infestations of winter creeper. And um, that's not good for trees to be covered with this really dense, thick green growth in the middle of winter and all summer. And it um, interferes with the trees, it breaks their branches, it makes it hard for them to grow the leaves they need. So that is what we're trying to do. Yeah, you put it on there, let it, I mean, and don't walk away. You cut, put it on, and this is for anything, not just any that you're using this technique for, not just winter creeper. Cut, immediately get it on there, mm -hmm. and enough to cover it, and then let it soak in real good. Okay. But you don't have to like pour the whole bucket on it or anything. No, no. And, and a lot of the pesticides and herbicides we buy are should be diluted. Uh, for various applications. So different applications need different amounts. Of, so please, again, read the instructions before using anything like that. Um, and be careful when you use it. Again, I, so that was a presentation on one of the many invasive plants that we're, we're working on. Um, there was an article I saw online today and she was focusing on saying, hey, some of these plants will, <clears throat> you know, some of them are more dangerous than others. So choose your battles wisely. And, and focus on the really, really aggressive ones. So perhaps good advice. Thanks for your presentation, by the way. Thank good you. Job. Thanks for coming tonight.